Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Major Shepherd Rants. In this episode, we shall be ranting and raving, or just talking about, um, the technological differences or comparisons of Star Trek and Star Wars, and which is superior, the same, you know, just then we have a talk about it. Um, I've actually had this uh, thing going for a while, this thought, or rant, but I've been trying to save it to, for this video, so here we go. Um, yeah, so let's start off with the big ones. Uh, which type of travel or way of going around the galaxy is faster? Star Trek's warp drive or Star Wars hyperdrive? Now, in an all general consensus, before recently, I originally thought that Star Trek was the most advanced technologically. I thought the warp drive was faster than the heart drive. I thought everything was just better and more advanced in Star Trek. Because they've got the whole the replicator things which replicate, well, basically anything. You've got, uh, freaking, like, phasers and quantums and blah, 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 blah. All those big science words to back to try and back up what they've got so I just assumed or felt that Star Trek was the most advanced out of all the sci-fi things I've seen but lately I have reversed my opinion I now think that Star Wars is the most advanced and the reason being is because of a few facts and things that have happened in it that actually don't meet, make it better so, like I was saying, we're starting off with the speeds, and this is what got me the most. Because I thought the warp drive was the fastest thing ever. But after actually starting to get into Star Trek, you know, because I, before I never watched it, I watched like a few episodes when my dad watched it when it used to be on TV. But I didn't really like it at the time because I was a kid, and I couldn't appreciate a higher form of entertainment or whatever. You know, blah. But um, like a year ago, I watched the most of uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. All of the seasons. I just missed like the first episode of the first season and the last episode of the last season. That's all I missed. But um, I knew a bit about like you know the other ones like Voyager, the original series, Deep Space Nine, which out of all of the Star Treks, I actually didn't like that much Deep Space Nine. I don't know why. I didn't even watch mo any of it. But I feel like it just—it just feels like a cheap version. But uh, that's a different discussion. Anyway, um, as I said, I thought the warp drive was the fastest thing because it was like, oh, it's real time. It's got science that backs it up, and everything that's been invented in Star Trek was origin got invented in real life. And I thought, okay, that's it. Star Trek is real, or well, Star Trek is gonna be real at some point. But as I said. Uh, recent things have come to my attention which make me reevaluate what I originally thought. Because the warp drive, it, I think the basic principle is that it creates some sort of um, distortion around the ship that is going into warp, and it creates another distortion behind it which propels it forward. And the bigger that is, the more faster you go, that kind of thing. But the thing is, it doesn't go up to the speed of light. It goes up to like not maybe half of the speed of light, but it never it hasn't actually gotten to a point yet where it goes at the speed of light. And it's that actually says a lot. Um in uh, Voyager, Star Trek Voyager, um the ship called Voyager gets catapulted, I think it's 70,000 to 75,000 light years away from its previous destination. And apparently it would take, or they actually said in the show, it would take around 70 or 75 years to get back. And obviously by that point, they'd all be either dead or really, really old. And their kids would be getting back into that system. And it would be like, oh, we don't know what Earth is. 
kind of thing. So, you got that. And the only way they actually managed to get back in time, this is spoilers by the way, if you haven't actually watched Voyager, and you're going to, but if you don't, then you can keep listening. Um, the only way they got back before that, because they were there for, what was it, like three, four years, going around the that un destined, uh, uh, blah, unexplored region of the galaxy, uh, they only got backed from like a, uh, I think it's Captain Janeway, who's the leader of the ship, gets a visit from a future version of herself, which manages to um, give her some sort of battle armor for the ship. I don't know how it works, but they get that and then it enables the ship to go at a speed that makes it so then they instantly get back or they go through a wormhole. It's something like that and they get back instantly. So that cut it all down. But the thing is, if that didn't happen, she would have taken 75 years to get there and she would be dead by then. In comparison, Star Wars, the Star Wars's hyperdrive can do that distance in a couple of days, maybe even a week. Because it, and the thing with the hyperdrive is that it's not like the warp drive. It doesn't create a field around the ship and behind it. It actually enters another, um, some sort of another dimension called the hyper hyperspace. You know, which is what happens when you know when uh, you see in the films when it starts to speed up, the lights, the the stars, and all that go. Vroom. That's basically them going into hyperdrive or hyperspace. And it's like they're not really in space anymore. They're in another type of space. And they, I think they can get pulled out of it. But they, that's like dangerous or something. And it's, as I said, 70,000 70, or 75,000 light years. It would take them literally days to get back. In a week, probably the max, maybe two. But it would take them literally not as much time as a warp drive would. And it's just like, wah. And, and I was like, the first thing, I was like, okay, maybe this is when I started to think, okay, maybe, maybe it hasn't got the fastest ships. But it doesn't mean nothing else is load technology. Um, but then I started to look, try and look further into it. And... And then I, I start. It's when I start. That's when I started to think. Oh wait, maybe actually Star Wars is more technologically advanced. Because it goes like this: um, the warp drive in Star Trek was invented or created by humans. They invented it over time. I mean, there were other aliens that did it themselves that were more advanced. But I mean, humanity itself in Star Trek invented their own warp drive to get into deep space. So over time, they started to get better and better and better. Whereas in Star Wars, they don't. They actually get the technology for hyperspace from another race or another complete uh, complete civilization. Um, this is obviously this whole video is going to be full of spoilers, but um, the original race that had the hyperdrive was the Rakata. And I think before them, there was another species called the Ancients or something, uh, which made the hyperdrive, but then they disappeared or something. Uh, I think you get to see them in one of the early, later films, but I'm not sure, because it's like, oh, these beings evolved from the Ancients, and they're now these things which encompass the different sides of the Force, like, the woman is the good side, this guy that looks like he's... Evil is the dark side, and this old man is the neutral side, and then this woman who's basically the opposite to the Force or something. It's the f yeah, it's very complicated. <laughs> but, uh, it's not complicated, it's just very out there. But, yeah, um, all the other races get the hyperdrive when the Rakatan Empire gets wiped out from, I think it's a disease, that starts killing off their species, and, you know, making them have infighting and stuff. In fact, by the time, uh, what is it, Knights of Republic 1, they're basically just a tribe on a planet that you find. And they're like, we must regain our former glory, but first we have to get rid of these other tribes that are the good version of us or something. Uh, because it's like, the Rakatans were, before then, were like these big evil empire and they enslaved people and they were using the dark side of the force and at some point they got 
uh, disease that started killing them off through the force and cutting off their fa force powers and all of that. Um, and when they fell, they left behind all of that technology, which then the natives of the planets that had that technology developed into their own versions of the hyperdrive. So basically, they basically got the, the hyperdrives they have isn't theirs. They just uh, reverse engineered it for their own use. And in my opinion, if they actually, ha if that didn't actually happen, and the different races were set up in a way where they would start to get technically advanced every few centuries, or you know, natural development over time, they would have gone um, basic ships, what we've got now, the warp drive, and then hyperdrive. Because the warp drive is the slower one, but it still goes pretty damn fast compared to current ships, you know, like we've got now. They can still go across galaxies, it just takes a very long time. And I think the hyperdrive would be the evolution of the warp drive, because it's, it's using different principles, it goes places a lot faster, and it's like very, you know... More, a lot more efficient. I mean, it's. I think it uses different types of fuel. Like the warp core uses like dilithium crystals and proton beams and stuff like that. And I think the Romulans use like some sort of uh, uh, black hole that's on the verge of collapse, but they keep it at the verge so then they can keep using the energy without destroying the ship. Obviously, if the ship blows up, then that's you know bad because it kind of implodes on itself. But um, uh, anyway. It, it, you've got that, so it would go current space travel, warp drive, hyperdrive, and then whatever would be next. I don't know, instantaneous travel. You know, just, there you go, you're there. Instant. Um, it's like, wow, that actually is pretty cool. It still means that Star Trek has a fast hyperdrive. Or, uh, not hyperdrive, warp drive. It's still a valid form of travel. It's just not as fast as hyperspace travel is um and you know it's still advancing in star trek i think the fastest they ever got was like uh war 9.97 uh i don't i'm not very good at maths but apparently that's like maybe a half maybe a bit less than the speed of light and then they got like the theory of warp theories and stuff where it's like you can go to 24.9 which is nearly the speed of light just a bit short something to that effect whereas the hyperspace actually goes as fast as light or even faster so it's like uh what was it uh i remember reading somewhere where it's like the first hyperdrives were pre were still were slow for their for modern hyperdrive people because it would go at like what what nine tenths or something or something like that of the speed of light and then as it advanced it got to like five then 0.10, then 0.1, and then actually going faster than the speed of light. I just, it all, it's very, it's, all this math stuff is confusing for me. If you can figure it out, then that's great. You tell me, <laughs> because I can't get my head around it. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, if the people in Star Wars had developed over time, they would have had warp drive and then hyperdrive. Uh, and it's just like, whoa. <laughs> and then I started looking at the after that I started looking at the uh, the other technology that was in it so like you know the replicators and the touch screens and the things that actually ended up being in the real world like touch screens like I said and uh, all this other stuff and then I did some looking into it and in actuality those things existed before Star Trek came out but they weren't you know, widely available. So all the things of people saying, ah, oh, well, Star Trek made this happen in real life, and this happened because Star Trek happened. It's like, well, actually, no, it didn't, because it happened before Star Trek. And I and I didn't know that. I had to actually look for that. And I was like, oh, okay. That completely changes my thoughts of it, then. And it's like, oh... It's just, it just completely changed my opinion of what is better, or, well, not better, which is more technologically advanced. So, it's, what? And then, obviously, it, 
pe- there is the argument that you can't really compare the two things because they're completely different things. Like Star Trek is science fiction, while Star Wars is science fantasy because it's got things like the Force and lightsabers and, and stuff like that, impossible feats of humans and other things and all of that. Whereas Star Trek is more trying to have uh, like real situations in a way where it's like limitations on things like you can't you can't use the force you you can't uh, uh i don't know have bacter i don't know it's it's just it's like even if they are two different genres they're still dealing with the same subject material in a way it's space it's out there for all we know the force might exist who knows People will just suddenly say, oh, well, the Force does exist with no evidence. But then people say, the Force doesn't exist with no evidence. Other than the fact that they can't do it. For all, it could exist, who knows. But that's a different thing altogether. So, this rant is just specifically about the technological differences. Um, and I guess we could, pa- we could compare uh, another thing, which is not a film or TV show. It's a game. It's a game I'm actually playing right now on my channel uh, called Mass Effect. It's a, it's also kind of still kind of science fictiony, but it's also science. What's it called? Space opera or space action? I can't remember what it was called. Um, and I think they're nearly the same as Star Trek because they get they get their technology from a race that existed before them. They get their technology and it just it just goes whoosh straight up. It's like oh now we've got these guns that shoot shrapnel. I would still say Mass Effect isn't advanced as Star Trek or Star Wars uh, in any respect, but their speed is probably about on par to the hyperdrive or hyperspace because it's um, in Star Wars before they had the hyperdrive, they had these things called hyper cannons or hyperspace cannons. And what they would, what I've looked up and uh, tried to find out, is that they would actually put a ship in the cannon and literally just shoot it out of their, out of their planet, straight into the into space, and they would just go into hyperspace. The problem with that is that you could end up anywhere. You could go, you could end up in a random part of the galaxy. You would literally have to aim the gun or cannon at a specific point where you want to go, and if you're not careful, you completely miss where you're trying to go. Um, and obviously it's like a bullet, so over time it would slow down, but obviously there's the whole thing of, like, Newton's third law or something, or law of relativity, where it's like an object in space can't stop because there's no friction to stop it. But imagine, you've got a planet, it's going to stop you. <laughs> so it's, prob- it's probably going to be more like, uh, instead of being a ship designed for flight, it's going to be a ship designed to survive an impact kind of thing. Um, and it's kind of the same thing with Mass Effect because they launch them at ludicrous speeds and they only stop when they hit another relay. Uh, It's like it's combining the two theories or the two methods that Star Trek and Star Wars has because I think in in Mass Effect it creates a field which is a Mass Effect field which completely uh, either lowers the uh, mass of it of the item that's being launched or completely removes it, and then it just keeps going. And then the other side, the other relay, would then add it all back, so then they would just, you know, come to a complete stop. Or whatever. Slow down to their original speed. So it's it's kind of like they combine the two things together, which I think is cool. It's still... It's probably a bit faster than Star Wars, though. Because it's like, instead of it being days, it happens in, like, hours or even less Cause it's, but the thing is it's a point to point system and that leads into the next discussion straight away the the versatility of the three types of travel we'll start off with Mass Effect cause it's a combination of the two so um, with uh, Mass Effect you can't from what I can, from what I understand, you can't fly with just light speed engines or sub light speed engines from point from Galaxy One or Universe or uh, System One to System 
No, no. Galaxy 1 to Galaxy 2. This is not like the Milky Way galaxy. I mean like the little... What they're called? Uh, the parts that have the different solar systems in them. I can't remember what they're called. You've got like the solar system... We'll just call them systems. You can't go from one system to another using sublight energy engines. It would take years. It would basically be longer than what the 70,000 light years would have been for Star Trek. It would have taken them so long. They would have died by like not even halfway. They would have died like near the beginning because it takes thousands thousands of light years to get to that point. And using sublight engines is just not done. But if you use a mass relay, which is what creates the thing that makes them go fast, or to other galaxies, it does it nearly instantaneously, or a few hours, depending on how far away it is. Um, but the thing is, it's a point-to-point -point system. So you can't use like uh, a relay from, let's say, the Sol system to go to another one I mean it, it's got like uh, you have to know the destination you have to go to in order to shoot the relay there because if you just shoot it really nearly you could end up anywhere and it would be a really bad thing and because you could be lost and you wouldn't be able to know the destinations of where you came from before uh, like um, the relay for Ilos you need a specific relay in order to get to that one I think no not Ilos the one in Mass yeah, I've got it confused. The one in Mass Effect 2 when you had to go to the center of the galaxy or at some point, the only way to get there was to go through the Omega relay. You couldn't use any of the other ones because this one was a specific one. If you tried to use another one, it wouldn't work. So, you got that. Um I think that's all I can talk about for Mass Effect. I it's cuz Mass Effect's like a newer thing, so I still have to try and figure that one out. And then we've got um, Star Trek, which is, I would say, probably the most versatile out of all of them. Because it doesn't need a point-to-point -point system. You just go, you just go. You just point wherever you want to go and then go, woo, fly around the galaxy. It'll take a long time, but you can go to the different galaxies and systems and stuff like that, you know, where however you want. You see a planet, you can go there, even if you're on mid-travel to somewhere else. Like, you, you're facing north, see a planet to the west, turn the ship, you go there. Or turn the ship right, or keep going, or whatever. It, basically, you can go wherever you want to. It's just going to take a while. Um, so that's probably the strength of the warp drive. And then you've got Star Trek. And now this is where it's a bit... This is the big downside to Star Wars. Uh, the hyperdrive is a as I said, it's it's even more strict compared to uh, Mass Effect. Because this is a, positively just a point-to-point -point system. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to go there and then go that way. Because if you do that, you're basically going to die because you're going to end up in the middle of nowhere with no way of finding. Unless you're extremely lucky and, you know, manage to chart a new hyperspace route then you've got one, you're there, you're fine. But that's like really unlikely unless you know what you're doing. Because um, it's... Uh, it, from what I find, originally the hyperdrive was just, you know, you had to remember the exact location of the places you were going. If you did not, you could end up in the middle of nowhere and die. And then later on, they invented things, uh, the nav computer, which made it a lot easier to keep track of the different places. So like... Uh, it would calculate your de your pl your position in space and where the place you want to go is, and then it would automatically face you in that destination and then shoot itself there. Whereas before, you would have to keep your you have to remember where each of the planets were, and then go. <laughs> um, and it was like they have to follow specific routes in order to get to their destination. If not. Bam! Dead! You're gone! You're not coming back, son! Uh, so that's really a big downside. Well, I wouldn't say it's a big downside, I would say it's just a downside. Because if you don't have a nav computer, and you just, you're just you lost in space, then there's a quite likelihood that you're just done. I've said that so many times now, but you get the idea. You're dead if you don't have one. <laughs> 
and yeah, you just there there have been people that have actually gone around in their ships in Star Wars just to find new routes, you know, and that's a normal thing. But the thing is, you have to have a lot of safety precautions in order to do that, otherwise you will just die. So they probably like tell people where they're going, how they got back, you know, like a what are they called space beacon. And like so then the nav computers would find the signal for the space beacon and they would be able to go back. Because other planets just have places that you go. And maybe they have beacons as well, but you probably have to be within a set distance in order for it to happen. So every few jumps you would have to drop another space beacon so then you don't get lost. So like leaving a bread trail basically. So you've got the first one, the second one, the third one, blah 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 blah. And then you would have to find those beacons again to get back. Uh, but yeah, you got that, and that's the ships. That's the that's the main thing that I found that actually changed my opinion of the whole thing. Or I actually now think Star Wars is the more technologically advanced compared to Star Trek. Even if Star Trek has a versatile way of traveling around the galaxy, re sort of quickly, the Star Wars has ones that will just that are nearly like. In hours or days, depending on your destinations, and uh, it just completely changed my opinion. And you've even got freaking lightsabers. I already loved Star Wars. You know, if Star Wars was is was and is my favorite. You know, space genre thingy that's become a big thing, and I'm sure a lot of people are like that as well. And but. That doesn't mean I don't like Star Trek. I like Star Trek. I think it's fun. I think it's cool. It's like, oh, well, oh, these things are really cool. What if at some point we invent this? And blah, 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 blah. And, you know, there's people that have actually, the scientists that have actually tried to think, that have actually come up with, like, mathematical equations that allow people to go into warp one or something. And that's just insane. It's like, ugh. Imagine at some point we would actually might be able to get this. I mean, it might take us years or thousands of years, maybe even more, to even get warp 0.5 rather than 1. But we could achieve it. We could achieve the hyperdrive. Who knows? We could achieve so many things. We might end up having a third arm growing out of our ass by that point. Who knows? Because apparently people are still evolving. And even though we've been the same for quite a long time... I don't understand. I don't know how we're still evolving. I think it's more of a brain thing than anything else, which doesn't really mean much to me because um, my brain dumb. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean I could talk about like lightsabers, but that's a different thing. Cause lightsabers, because it because. You can't really have a comparison for Star Trek because Star Trek doesn't have things like that. They have normal swords and maybe like a maybe plasma cutter thingies, but they don't have freaking lightsabers or anything to an equivalent of that. In fact, because it's like I think the only thing that you could compare it to would be phases, those handheld things that they shoot in like guns, but they look weird. Because it's like, they both use a form of energy to attack things. But the thing is, a phaser can only do so much. It can heat things up, it can cut through things, but it can only cut through things uh, like if they eat, reach a specific range. Specific, not Pacific. Uh, so like a phaser can is like a, using a wavelength. So it's like um, using the electromagnetic spectrum to cut through things and shoot, because it's a type of energy. Whereas a lightsaber just cuts through anything other than specific types of metal, like cortosis or something like that, or Mandalorian iron. Those kind of things, it can't cut through. It can defend against them, which is good, but it can't cut through them. Whereas a phaser is even less than that because it has to cut through. It can cut through specific things. It can't cut through everything like a lightsaber nearly can. Um, but 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I already thought that the Star Wars lightsabers were better than all the other well, stuff in Star Trek anyway. Um, the only thing I would say Star Trek trumps out in Star Wars is the fabric, the replicators. Because those things can just make anything. They can make food, they can make ceramic pots. They just You think of it, it makes it. I don't think it can make... You know, like a being, it can't make like a cat or a dog. I don't think it goes that far, but it goes to the point where it's basically they have eliminated world hunger. You just replicate it and give it to people for free. <coughs> and then there's the whole thing is like humanity has evolved to the point for in Star Trek where they don't need money. It's like bullshit. Bullshit. There will always be a need for a currency or some sort of transaction between things. Because if there wasn't, we would have run out of resources. We would have run out of everything if there wasn't, you know, monetary or some sort of transaction that uh, limited the amount of things you could get because you didn't have enough to get that. I mean, it, they say that, but then, of course, they've got this thing called Latinum and credits that they use in the show. It's like, well, the other races use it. Well, then you're not evolved to the point where you don't use it then, because you have to use it. And then you compare it to Star Wars, they still have credits. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's it's money. But then again, it's like, it's it's again, because it's done by two different people. Star Trek is done by, or was done by, Gene Roddenberry, who... Is dead now because he died during, uh, during or just after season one of the Next Generation. Um, whereas George Lucas made Star Wars, he's still alive, but he doesn't own it anymore because Disney do now. Which I don't know how that's going to affect it. Hopefully, it doesn't affect it in a negative way, where it's like they start putting Mickey Mouse in it or something stupid like that. They probably won't, but they'll probably do something where it's more like, oh, it's more for kids now. Oh, it's like, Star Trek, has, Star Wars has always been about kids. It's like, no, it's not. It's never been about kids. That was what was wrong with the first, the three prequels. It made it too kid-centric, when the previous ones were not. That's going to be a separate rant video, probably. But, uh, yeah, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, replicators. Because replicators... Star Trek gets replicators, Star Wars does not. But it's still using, you know, like, crops and stuff. They haven't gotten to the point where it's like, oh, I can make food out of nothing. <laughs> um, and, I, and the thing is, it's like, the two different themes, it's like, Star Trek is more about um, getting rid of the things that G Gene Roddenberry deemed as uh, negative traits of humanity. Things that he saw wasn't a good thing, like commercialism, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, not diplomacy. You know, the things that everyone uses. Communism, not communism. The other one. You know what I mean. You probably know what I mean. Um, he didn't like any, he didn't, all the things he didn't like, he, tr he took out in Star Trek and tried to show that it was better without any of it. And it's like, when you look at it deep enough, the Star Trek universe is kind of boring if you lived there. I mean, obviously, if you were like a space traveler or something like that, it'd be fine. But if you were, you know, a, just a civilian, your life would be boring. They don't have get video games or, you know, they have some sort of video game. I think in one episode they have like a headset thing, but that ends up biting them in the ass where it's like completely taking over their bodies or minds. Um, but yeah, they don't have video games, they don't have gambling, which even now I don't understand why people go, oh, but gambling's evil. It's like, no, it's not. It's a form of entertainment. Gambling is only evil when you want it to be, or how you perceive it. Uh, they don't have prostitutes. Maybe you can go to another ga a planet or something, but on Earth, no. Or colonies, probably not. Um, it's talking about gender equality but most of the time in the show it's not really shown I mean there are points where they have I mean they have like a science officer who's like a badass until she dies and then 
something about going into the past and then the future and then she has a daughter who's a Romulan or something. It's very confusing. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just like what if this is what Gene was hoping humans would become if they didn't have the the things he deemed as negative traits. You know, which is a tough thing to say. What is and isn't a negative trait. You've got to just. Yeah. In my opinion, you've just—it's just everything is a part of humanity. If you get rid of one thing, then it's either going to aggravate another thing that's going to be end up becoming a negative trait, or you basically just make them stop being human. You make basically make these, these robots that go, "Yes, sir, I will do what you say. I am a robot. Let me clean your boots," you know. And Star Tre- Star Wars is like. The complete opposite. It actually exemplifies the negative and positive traits of humanity. Like rage, anger, hate, love. It's actually the centric thing or theme of the whole thing. Of the whole universe of Star Wars. It's like, should you give up your emotions to become a paragon of justice? Is it the right thing to do? Is it the bad thing to do? Should you embrace your emotions and become a Sith or... Whatever, a grey Jedi. Uh, Is that a good thing? Is it not a good thing? It's basically like the forces of dark versus the forces of light. You know, I I usually don't like that kind of thing. I usually like to think that people make choices and it's their views that make it good or bad. It's not like some sort of force that makes people do bad and good things. It's just the way people choose. What may be a bad thing for one person will be a good thing for another person. Let's say, shoot in a fire a ten-year-old. Um, the bad guy or the, the bad guy quotation marks would do it because, uh, I don't know, because he wanted to kill the kid. While the good guy would be like, I had no choice. It's not my fault. Whereas the normal guy would be like, I had to kill him because he had a gun. And he was shooting me. It's it's kind of hard to explain, at least for me. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I should uh, finish this video before it ends up coming into like just talks of nothing, where I just basically waffle on and on about something completely different. Because I think I've talked about most the important thing I want to talk about which was this different drives but hopefully it's understandable you guys can understand what I'm saying rather than me talking extremely fast I hope I haven't actually been I feel like I've been talking normally but um, hopefully you guys will understand what I've been saying you can see my points and my thought process blah 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 um so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode i'm thinking about doing a major shepherd rant every saturday so because it's a free time usually i take the weekends off but it's a rant video and even when i'm not recording i rant sometimes to myself which sounds insane but i'm doing it right now i mean i'm ranting to you guys who i can't actually talk to right now because this is a recorded one You'd only be able to hear what I'm saying after I've posted it up. So, yeah, I'm think as I was saying, I'm thinking about making this video or one of these uh, a major shepherd rants video every Saturday. Um, it doesn't mean I'll stick to that. There'll be times where I might not be in the mood to do a rant, or I haven't got a topic to talk about or rant about. Um, but maybe I could do a thing where I take your guys' ideas, like. You put a thing in the comments. It's like rant about this next. Or talk about this next. And then I'll think about it. Say yes or no. Or actually just do the video. I, I've still got I think two or three more things I want to talk about. But I have to do them before I end up losing what I was going to talk about. But yeah this has been Major Shepherd. And thank you for watching this episode of Major Shepherd Rants. I'll see you next time guys. Where I shall talk about whatever I think of. So until then, this has been Major Shepard, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.